That is that is absolutely correct. That is a very good example. A lot of people are um, are afraid of public speaking. The first time that I was was at at a Toastmasters meeting, I actually felt uh, droplets of sweat traveling both up and down. So I didn't know if gravity was up or <laughs> gravity was down or up or what. But that is what happened at, at the first meeting. But then I kept on and kept on and uh, you know and uh, practicing speak, speaking in front of people, and now I can do it very comfortably. But that is a great example. Any other examples? Yes, go ahead. I think in human nature, we, we are more comfortable with what we know. And it doesn't necessarily mean that what we know is a better or a worse situation, but it's what we know. So we become resistant to change. Mm -hmm. Even if the change might be at the physical level better, there's a resistance to it because we don't know about it. So there's a resistance to change. and kind of a fear of the unknown that seems to cause a, a, a lot of mental blocks uh, for myself and for people that I observe. I mean, you right. sit here and continue to do something that that kind of sucks, and you know it sucks, but you know it, so you're just, you know, the devil you know versus the one you don't. I think there's a fear there, so. That is correct. The resistance, resistance to change is a huge factor. It's a huge factor. For not only for individual but but for entire companies to have a block in their progress because the company doesn't want to change or the individual doesn't want to try something new so that is a huge factor now that is partly intellectual and partly emotional the, the intellectual part is that you are not familiar with something new so you are kind of held in to train your mind to do something new and the emotional part is just that you are scared of the unknown. So these mental blocks come, uh, you know, they don't always belong to just one level, but they might overlap several levels. Well, I have done practice driving with my teen, and I have to say all three levels were hit. The physical, not so great, almost hit the mailbox. The emotional uh -huh. and the intellectual, they just don't know the rules like they should. So I think on all levels, it was a huge block. OK, OK. Um, but I never would have thought of that unless you told me something. Sure, sure. Um, but that's a, it's a great example. Okay, so, so we talked about uh, how to overcome different situations. Okay, I'm having a mental block right here. It's not going to happen. Did she get, you know, get her license finally? Or? Not yet. Oh, not yet. I'm still yet. working on it. She should have come to this presentation. <laughs> I've seen this. Okay. We seem to be having a computer block over here. Let's see. Okay. So we went through that. Okay. So these are the physical physical level mental blocks. It's 1239 right now, right? So I do have like 20 minutes to go? Yes. 15, 20 minutes. Okay. Um, so, at the physical level, you would create changes in your physical environment. We talked about that, so I'm skipping over that slide now. Now, we talked about a couple of these, right? Take the first step, relax, have a coffee, brainstorm, organize your thoughts, set goals. Setting goals is an extremely, extremely, extremely powerful way of overcoming mental blocks. Like that gentleman said also, that uh, it, it is very difficult to change on the spur of the moment. But if you plan your goals, if you plan to change, then it becomes a lot easier. Because now you have a goal that you want to do so and so thing on so and so date, and you are planning for the change. You're looking forward to it. Overcoming mental blocks intellectual. Let me give you a second to read that slide. Now, that slide is a little wordy, but it's worth reading. If you practice things that are new and difficult, the capacity of the brain to do those new things increases. In technical terms, neural networks reorganize themselves, and newer networks develop to support the newer ways in which the brain is used. The Wall Street Journal last week, I think, had a very interesting article on this. So the article was about how to improve your creativity, and the article hit on the fact that in the past, doctors used to think 
that you cannot develop certain skills like creativity. For instance, just because uh, your mental makeup by the time that you're an adult, you have a certain number of neurons in your brain and the, the neurons are meshed in certain ways and, and the pattern cannot be altered. Now this group of scientists actually got together and they did some tests and they saw that you can alter those, those, those neural networks, those patterns in your brain just by thinking. Like the example they gave is, they had a group of volunteers um, practice the piano. They learned the piano, they practiced the piano, so, so they were actually moving their fingers and their hands and practicing. They had another group of volunteers who did not practice the piano, but they practiced it mentally, not hands-on. They went through the motions in their mind about actually working with the piano and hitting the keys and so on and so forth. And they found identical changes in the brain, the physical structure of the brain, for these two groups of people. And this was a very powerful, um, powerful experiment because it shows us that even if we physically don't do something, the thoughts that we have can change our brain patterns. So guess what is happening to your kids who watch all those violent movies? Think of their brain patterns. And that is what a lot of people are concerned about, those violent video games and how they affect uh, kids. This uh, shows this tiny guy over there, you know, rearranging the wires in his brain. It's just a, a metaphor for, uh, for rewiring your brain, the physical, physical structure of your brain changes the more you do different things. Overcoming mental blocks intellectual. So uh, a big cause of mental blocks is actually because the information that you've got from outside has not been trans transformed into knowledge. So you have a whole mass of information, but the information is not organized. It's, it's just like having a book with you without knowing what chapter has what. Then we can talk about lateral and vertical thinking and welcome change to hit the point the gentleman just talked about. Information or knowledge. So we have a book and unless and until you convert all of that information into meaningful data and process that data in your mind, you will not have converted that to knowledge. Any thoughts about that? Do you sometimes feel that kids might just read a lot of um, literature and go to an exam and not do well because they just read a lot but they haven't really absorbed it? Can you think of a parking lot? Think of uh, the local mall that you have maybe gone to during Thanksgiving, or maybe during Thanksgiving you avoided that mall for certain reasons. And think of how the parking lot of that mall would look during Thanksgiving. There are people are all over the place, uh, there are cars inside uh, you know, the parking lot, there are cars parked and there are people waiting for, uh, for spaces to get emptied. There are cars in all directions of all shapes and sizes and nobody can get anywhere because the whole place is such a mess that there's no place to move. Think of a parking lot like that. Picture that parking lot in your mind and think about that as being a mass of information that is not moving anywhere for the simple reason that it is so disorganized. Right? Now think of the same parking lot on a regular day when the crowds are a lot thinner, when the cars are parked neatly, and you can drive, drive in the parking lot because there's plenty of space to drive, and you can easily navigate the parking lot, find your space, do your shopping, get out of the space, drive your car back home. Think of how different the two pictures are. The second picture is where you have organized your thoughts, and your thoughts have turned into knowledge. That is what I have tried to tell the students that I have coached um, when they were like undergraduate students. And they had problems in doing math problems just because they had a different background. Their mind wasn't used to thinking in terms of mathematics and in terms of you know, um, mechanics of materials, motion, things moving, levers 